initially mm. when I encountered uh, the violence in Islam, I said, well, this can't be the true Islam. And I, for years, would push back, arguing, no, this hadith here is unreliable. For example, Muhammad says in Sahih Muslim that he has come to expel the Jews and Christians from the Arabian Peninsula and will not leave any but Muslims. That doesn't sound like the Muhammad I knew, so I said, well, that can't be a reliable tradition. And then another tradition from Sahih Bukhari, which says, I have been ordered to fight people until they testify that there is no God but Allah, and only then will their lives and their property be saved from me. And this is from the most reliable collection of hadith, Sahih Bukhari. And so I said, no, that can't be reliable either. Mm. And as you continue, you find Muhammad beheading mul multiple hundreds of men at the same time. Um, you see him uh, distributing those men's wives and children into slavery. You see him torturing people for money. You see him, um, it, all these atrocities within Muhammad's life, mm. uh, and not always in defensive battles by any means, um, offensively as well. And so... It, after trying to dismiss many of these traditions, I said, well, let me, let me piece together what's going on here, because if I dismiss all of these violent traditions, then I am basically dismissing the foundations of Islam. This is where I get my picture of Muhammad from. Mm. So looking just at the sources, what is the story? How do I reconstruct what Muhammad's life is like? And what you find when you do that, because there certainly are peaceful passages in the Quran. We mm. can't ignore that. Mm. Um, like chapter 2, verse 256 of the Quran, which says there is no compulsion in religion. Hmm. And that, those are often the ones that are quoted in those response are often to, the ones. to yeah. people. Chapter 109, which says, you know, those of you who disbelieve, believe whatever you want and let us believe what we want. Hmm. Fairly peaceful. Hmm. Uh, one of the ones that's, uh, just I, I can't say this without laughing a bit, but so abused is chapter 5, verse 32 of the Quran, which says, um, if you kill one person, it says if you kill all of mankind. And if you, sa if you save a life, it says if you save all of mankind. Hmm. When you start understanding the context, though, you realize that this is not the ultimate message of Islam. For example, that one verse, chapter mm. 5, verse 32 of the Quran, says the first part of that verse is, it was told to the Jews, if right. you kill one person, it's as if you kill all mankind, right. if you save a life, if you saw, as if you save all mankind. And we do, we find that in mm. tr uh, Tractate Sanhedrin of the Babylonian Talmud. I see. Uh, it's, not in the Quran, it's not a teaching for Muslims. The next verse is the teaching for Muslims. Ah. Right. Uh, which says, if anyone creates mischief in the land or strives against Allah or his messenger, crucify him or kill him. Right, a very different message. Feet. Exactly. Okay. So you start getting the context. And what you find is in the first 13 years of Muhammad's uh, prophetic career, um, he lives a peaceful life. He has about 100 followers by the end of that time, not that mm. many. Um, certainly doesn't have a fighting force. Most of these people are of humble means. Um, and he, he doesn't fight during that time. But then he's given rule over a city. An entire city gives him uh, the, the right to be arbiter. Mm. From that moment until his death, approximately nine to ten years, he personally participates in or deputizes 86 battles. Right. So that's an average of nine plus battles a year. And they culminate in intensity until the moment he dies. Chapter 9 of the Quran is the last major chapter of the Quran to have been composed, and it is the most expansively violent. This is the one mm. that starts off by saying, this is a disavowal of all the treaties we have with polytheists. Chapter 9, verse 5, slay the infidels wherever you find them, lay siege to them, take them captive. Chapter 9, verse 29, fight the Jews and Christians until they pay you the poll tax right. and they feel subdued. Why? Chapter 9, verse 33, Islam has been made to prevail over every religion. So, I mean, chapter 9 is the most violent. It's the culmination of the Islamic message. It's, what, it's the marching orders that Muhammad leaves Muslims with, which is why when he dies, Muslims conquer one-third of the known world within 150 years. Right. These were the by messages. the sword. By, well, it's, it's, it's complex. Once again, mm. they would tell places, if you do not convert, then you have the option to pay a tax. And if you don't pay that tax, then this we will fight the, you. The jizya. Exactly. Tax. Yeah. So it was, it was expanding into territory. The first option mm. people were given was conversion. The second option was paying a tax. And if that didn't happen, then it was, then right. it was by the sword. And do, do you basically see this as effectively the modus operandi of groups like ISIS today? Well, this has been the classical understanding of Islam up until the fall of the Ottoman Empire. No Muslim really ever had qualms with it. It's, it's what it was, and this mm. is the, mes the means through which Allah had given Muslims dominance around the world. And it wasn't until Muslims had to, had to as a, a culture, flip the script and start playing the defensive, the, the victim mm. Mm. Uh, card, which they hadn't done before. Mm. Uh, so for example, the Crusades, many Muslims will point to the Crusades now and say, this is another example of, of Christian uh, sort of superiority complex and trying to keep mm. us down and oppressing us. 
The, the Crusades were never even discussed in Islamic literature. There was no Muslim or Arabic word for Crusades until Christians came up with one in the right. 19th century. Okay. Um, it just wasn't a part of the Islamic mentality mm. until the Ottoman Empire fell, the Islamic world started losing its power, and then these discussions started happening. And that's why you don't hear the phrase, Islam is a religion of peace, until the 20th century. That simply wasn't a phrase. It was never then. said. It was never yeah. thought. That wasn't the way Muslims had thought up until that time. Tune in to the Profile Interview in association with Christianity Magazine every Saturday at 4pm only on Premier Christian Radio where faith comes to life.